Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are going to be doing another problem in our Leak Code 75 uh, study plan. So uh, we are still in the stat category and we are going to do the asteroid collision problem. Uh, this is ranked a medium difficulty problem and the uh, instructions are we are given an array asteroids of integers representing asteroids in a row. For each asteroid, the absolute value represents its size and the sign represents its direction, positive meaning right, negative meaning left. Each asteroid moves at the same speed. Find out the state of the asteroids after all collisions. If two asteroids meet, the smaller one will explode. If both are the same size, both will explode. Two asteroids moving in the same direction will never meet. Okay, so uh, for those of you who didn't get that from just from the instructions, let's look at a, an example or two. So um, basically, uh, we're, we have the input array 5, 10, and negative 5. Uh, 5 and 10 are both moving to the right, so they're never going to collide. And then we have negative 5, which is moving to the left because it has a negative sign, so um, it's eventually going to collide with 10, right? Um, since 10 has an absolute value that is higher than 5, um, then that means that 10 is going to survive the collision and 5 is not going to, and therefore we return 5 and 10. Um, and if, say, say the rules were reversed, this was negative 10 and this was 5, it would actually crush through and it would actually... Um, just return negative 10 because um, it would be greater than both negative 5 and um, or just 5 and this 5 as well. So um, it can it can crush through multiple asteroids, right? Um, okay, and then for our constraints, it looks like uh, the asteroid size can't equal 0 and it's just within the size of an integer value. So um, all right, so what I'm thinking um, to solve this problem, we have to imagine a line where asteroids are moving right, um, which are positive numbers, um, or left, which are the negative numbers, uh, with the number size indicating their strength. And we need to create a stack to store the asteroids and iterate over each one. If an asteroid is moving right, we need to add it to the stack. If it's moving left, then there's an asteroid moving um, and there's an asteroid moving right at the top of the stack, then we need to simulate a collision by comparing their sizes, removing the smaller one, or both of them if they're equal sizes, and then the remaining asteroids in the stacks are the ones that survive the collisions. All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, implement our solution, right? So um, like I said, the first thing that we need to do is create our stack. So um, in order to do that, we just do stack, and then it's going to be a stack of integers. Um, we can just call this stack for the stake, sake of uh, simplicity, and then um, just initialize it like this. Okay, so uh, we need to go and loop through each asteroid in the input array, right? So in order to do that, we can just use a simple for each loop. So um, to make a for each loop, we just do int. And then we can call this asteroid in our array of asteroids. Okay. So um, we're going to need to create a, some, some sort of Boolean value that's going to uh, signify uh, or signal whether or not we're going to add the current asteroid in the loops iteration um, to the stack or not. So we're going to use this at a later point. Um, so let's just call this boolean flag and we can set this to true for default all right so i mentioned earlier that a asteroid can keep moving right so say we have a negative asteroid and it's going to collide with one going right that's already in the stack it can keep moving through if it's if it's continuously bigger than the asteroid that's going in the opposite direction right so in order to simulate that collision we need to have a while loop right because one particular one can keep moving, so hence the while loop. So uh, let's think of our conditions, right? The stack can't be empty because if it's empty, then then the uh, then we're just going to add that asteroid to the stack, right? Because it can't collide with anything. So um, the stack can't be empty, and we can just use is empty method. All right, and then um, now what we need to check. Um, we will use an and statement. Um, we need to check if the uh, if the 
item or the asteroid on on the top of the stack um, is in a is is greater than zero, meaning it's going in a right direction, and then the asteroid is going left. So we need to check if they're going to collide, right? And in order to do that, all we need to do is use the stack peak function. So peak returns the value that's on top of the stack without getting rid of it, like the pop function would. Um, so stack peak is greater than zero and our asteroid is less than zero, right? So that means that they would collide. They're going in the opposite directions. All right. Now that we know that they're going to go in the opposite directions and they're going to collide, we need to see which one's bigger. So in order to do that, we need to compare absolute values and to compare absolute values, we can use the built-in math library that Java provides. So if math.abs, which is short for absolute, I'm assuming, um, and then we'll just check just like we did above with the peak statement. So if the peak is less than math.absolute of the asteroid, right? That means that the asteroid will destroy it. So um, we can symbolize the destruction of the asteroid with, or simulate it, I guess, with uh, popping, right? We pop that value from the stack, it disappears. So in order to do that, it's real straightforward, just stack pop, and then we're gonna wanna continue. Okay. Else, we need to check if they're equal. So in order to check if they're equal, it's similar to what we just did above. We're just using an equal sign. All right, and we're still gonna pop it from the uh from the stack if it's equal but we're also the asteroid if, if they're both equal then they're both getting destroyed so that means that we have to pop the stack but we also have to set the flag that we created earlier to false because because they're both destroyed so that means that the asteroid isn't going to be added to the stack right okay and then after this we can just break out of the loop Okay, so, so if the flag is true, then that means it survived the collision. And then we can just push the asteroid onto there. Okay, so uh, now that we're, we're finished here, let's just get out of our for loop, oops. Okay, and basically what we're doing is we're returning um, an integer array, um, but we have to, um, we have a stack right now and we can't return our stack. So we have to put our stack into an integer array. However, um, since the stack follows the principles of last in first out, that means we have to, um, basically unload the values of the stack in reverse order into an integer array in order to get the desired results. So, um, in order to do that, we're just going to set up um, a traditional for loop and then instead of starting from zero, we're going to start from the top and then just minus um, down each each iteration. So um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is uh, initialize the new array and we're going to set, set that equal to the size of the stack. So um, in order to do that, we just do int array and then we can call this remaining asteroids and we'll set it equal to new int and then we put the uh, size right here, so stack.size. All right, and then now, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna do the for loop. So int i is equal to, and we can just call this remaining asteroids.length, okay? Minus one, okay? And the reason that it's minus one is because arrays are zero indexed. And then uh, we're gonna do it until it's greater than or equal to zero. And then I minus minus. All right. So 
remaining asteroids at index i is equal to stack.peak. Remember, we're we're getting it, we're not taking it out yet. Then we're gonna then we're gonna pop it. Because we, we need to we need to return it with the peak. We need to get the value with the peak, and then we need to remove it so we can move on to the next one and the next iteration of the loop. All right, and then after that's done, it's simple. All we have to do is return the remaining asteroids. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. All right, so we passed the first three test cases. Let's submit. Okay, cool. So we went ahead and um, passed this for the submission. All right, and now for the time and space complexity analysis. So um, at first glance, this might look like big O of N squared um, because of the nested while loop inside of the for loop. Um, however, it actually is big O of N. And the reason is that each asteroid is processed exactly once. It's either put onto the stack or it causes a collision. And when the collision happens, an asteroid is removed from the stack. The removed asteroid was previously added to the stack so the pop operation does not count as a second operation in terms of big O notation. Essentially, each asteroid results in a push operation and possibly a pop operation if it collides. Both of these operations are big O of one, meaning that they take constant time. The asteroids causing the pop operation were already accounted, um, were already counted when they were pushed onto the stack, so we don't count them again. Therefore, despite the nested while loop, the overall time complexity of this algorithm is big O of n, as each asteroid is dealt with exactly once. And then for the space complexity, um, it's going to be big O of n as well, um, because our stack is going to scale with the input array um, and possibly be the, the size of the, or it's going to be the size of the, uh, the maximum size it can have is the size of the asteroids array. So um, there you have it. That's the time and space complexity for you for this particular problem. And um, that's going to be it for today. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please um, go ahead and leave a like. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to leave those in the comments or suggestions as well. Um, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm a new channel. I'm coming out with more and more content um, frequently. So uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.